As DeRozan got a well-deserved break after dropping a 40-piece, Chi-Town welcomed back one of their best wing defenders, Javante Green, and NBA best second option, Zach Levine, into the lineup versus OKC. Javante had missed the entire month, while Levine's absence had dreadfully showed up in some recent L's. In OKC, it was almost another brutal L as the Bulls nearly blew a 28-point lead, barely hanging on to get a much-needed bounce-back W. With Caruso out another six to eight weeks after the Grayson Allen mauling, and Lonzo out the same amount of time with a small meniscus tear, you can expect there to be some bumps in the road, but here's why Levine and Javante's return display that the Chicago Bulls got much needed reinforcements, and it's dangerous. Right quick, only 11.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes just a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. Bulls fan favorite, Ayo Dosumu, ranks number 6 among rookies in defensive rating, just a few spots behind Scotty Barnes of my hometown Toronto Raptors. I could make a separate video entirely going into the film room looking at Ayo's shockingly elite two-way impact. If that's something you'd be interested in, leave a like on this vid. But whether it's Ayo's incredibly active hands and pristine instincts defensively, or his veteran-esque consistent scoring on the other end of the floor for a top-seeded team in the Eastern Conference, this man was a robbery for Mark Eversley in the Bulls' front office as they snagged Ayo all the way down at pick number 38. Against OKC last night, Ayo scored a career-best 24 points on 10 for 14 shooting from the field, making four of his six attempts from deep range. Throughout the injury-ridden Bulls' recent slide, who could have predicted that a rookie would be the one constant amidst the Bulls' entire roster? Dosumu, who turned 22 last week, was a member of the Illinois Fighting Illini in the NCAA less than a year ago, so how is this kid showing out so seamlessly at the pro level? His 90 games equating to 3,000 minutes over three years at the college level may have something to do with how poised Osumu looks competing in the NBA with such little experience. You may or may not know this given how ideal Ayo's looked as a Bulls role player, but he was the number one guy in college, averaging over 20 points, six dimes, and five boards in 28 regular season games for the Fighting Illini, ultimately leading his alma mater to the second round of the NCAA tournament. It's not like the big stadiums or crowds at the pro level phase him, as Dosumu was playing in the same conference as massive basketball schools like Maryland, Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State, among others. Staying at the university level through to his junior season allowed Dosumu to eventually develop into a dominant player at the college level. Staying with the Illini also gained Ayo a ton of competitive 5-on-5 experience, crafting his IQ and talents into an NBA-caliber player. The fact that 37 picks went by and not one GM took this kid seriously, mostly due to the lack of hype he developed, and probably because he was older than most guys, just goes to show you that some executives don't deserve the highly criticized positions they occupy. Because shooting 49% from the field and 39% from distance while averaging 20 in his final college campaign should have made Dosumu much earlier of a pick. Ayo had been holding down the fort for Chicago defensively in the interim, but in the game against OKC, Chicago got back to baitably its most versatile wing-slash-forward stopper in Javante Green. In 25 minutes, Green was a game third-best plus five, while compiling five points, two steals, and a block. Chi-Town also welcomed back one of the faces of the franchise in Zach Levine, who hadn't played since exiting in the first quarter with left knee soreness on January 14th. An MRI the following day revealed no structural damage, but Levine actually revealed that he'd been playing through swelling in the same knee in which he once tore his ACL. Zach should earn some respect from the NBA universe for getting back one game sooner than his timetable projected, and for stuffing the box score with 21 points, 7 boards, 7 dimes, and 2 steals in Monday's unexpected nail-biting victory over OKC. While a win's a win at the end of the day, Good on Coach Billy Donovan for holding his guys accountable for drastically taking the foot off the gas pedal. Donovan said post-game versus OKC, we were not able to handle their pressure. This is where I think there's opportunities to help Io and Kobe grow and develop for those situations. Two of our primary ball handlers in Lonzo and Caruso are not here. 
when you get into these situations in the fourth quarter where teams turn up the defensive pressure and pick up full court, you have to be able to handle the basketball. We couldn't even get into offense. Zach got held up in some bad situations. Vooch had some situations. It wasn't even a matter of what we were running was bad. We couldn't even get into anything, end quote. Not having the calmness of the NBA player with the most total points in the fourth quarter in DeMar DeRozan, plus the fact that Zach was just regaining his comfortability following an injury, may have something to do with the collapse from Chi-Town down the stretch. Not to mention, this was the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Chicago's legs were clearly shot, and that showed. While the utter inconsistency from Nikola Vucevic continues as Vuce followed up a 4 of 19 performance versus Orlando with a 10 for 18 showing against OKC the very next night, last week Vuce did the same thing, going 2 of 13 against Memphis and then shooting 11 for 21 versus Cleveland. You never know what you're going to get from Nikola offensively, but two qualities that go relatively unnoticed with Vooch are his team best defense and board getting. Nikola is actually number six among all NBA players in rebounds per game, and he leads all Bulls players with the lowest defensive rating. Among all five men in the association, Vooch has been the seventh most valuable defensive center in basketball this season, directly behind Jaron Jackson Jr. and right ahead of Miles Turner. In terms of what the Bulls did on Monday, following the worst L of the season in Orlando, they looked to prove that was merely an off night. In Oklahoma City, DeRozan was a pre-game scratch due to rest, but the Bulls were still amazing for nearly three quarters, building up a 28-point lead. But the fourth quarter was utterly brutal for Chicago, getting dominated 32-19 in the frame by SGA and company, and Chicago nearly coughed up their once seemingly insurmountable lead. You have to give some credit to the up-and-coming team from Oklahoma City for fighting back, but the Bulls showed their veteran poise, hitting free throws when it mattered most, and getting buckets at just the right time to escape with a 111-110 dub. But how they finished the game was certainly a bit scary if you're a Bulls fan. Then again, the fact that Levine only went 6 for 19, Vucevic showed some signs of life, Javante returned and was a top impact player, and Ayo had a career night, with the Bulls building up nearly a 30-point lead. The fact that Chicago did that without DeMar DeRozan is kind of scary for opponents. Speaking of opponents, Chicago's next one on the schedule just happens to be the team I root for in the Toronto Raptors, who visit the United Center on Wednesday. But which perspective are you taking? Should the Bulls be scared themselves, or are they scary for whoever they're facing up against? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Irvin Alexar Guerra. Pause to read Irvin's in-depth take on the top-seeded Miami Heat. Appreciate every answer. You guys make this the best Hoopstock community on YouTube in the comments section. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.